fact is, I saw a UFO. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, real people, real UFOs. We'll hear stories from ordinary people who have encountered actual UFOs. It had like Egyptian writing, like backwards writing on it. The residents of a small town in Pennsylvania who witnessed an unbelievable sight. No wings, there was uh, no tail section, there was no motors, there was no windows, there was no doors. It was big enough for a grown person to stand up in. Our data files will shock you with true accounts like the unexplained lights above a small Idaho community. On the top of those trees over there, there was a bright light shining. And the UFOs observed over a peaceful country town. All of a sudden, these objects started coming up out of the treetops. The close encounter of a chopper and a UFO. We were almost involved in a mid-air collision. The frightened witness who was chased by a hostile craft. And this object made a right hand turn. And by this point, I was getting really scared. The remarkable reports of actual physical evidence of unidentified flying objects. I noticed that on the back of the vehicle, it had something that was covered by a tarp. The irrefutable accounts of military personnel who witnessed UFOs while on duty. The light tracked at a high speed and came to a stop, altered direction. The disturbing case of one man who was threatened if he went public with what he saw. All these guys coming in telling me that if I don't keep my mouth shut, they're going to throw me in jail. And we'll give you the final evaluation with our UNX report here on Unexplained Mysteries, Real People, Real UFOs. UFOs have puzzled and frightened witnesses since their first documented appearance in 1947. Around the world, thousands of people have been shocked by encounters of the first kind. Visual contact with an unidentified flying object. I saw this big triangular shaped three lights on each corner coming over my house. Sliding through the sky and it mm -hmm. tilted like it was looking down at us. Over there, at the top of those trees over there, there was a bright light shining. Encounters so close, witnesses can actually see the details on the UFO. They turn up on their side and you see like laser beams of light. And there are mysterious phenomena threatening innocent humans. In Scranton, Pennsylvania, a woman was followed by an object in the night sky. And this object made a right hand turn. And by this point, I was getting really scared. Victims traumatized by what they saw. I've never seen him shake. He actually was just shaking. I feel uncomfortable in the dark, not because I think there's a monster out there waiting for me, uh, but because there's something out there. And I didn't see what was behind the light. Some witnesses support their claim with startling videotape evidence and even the testimony of local police officers. I didn't believe initially when I received the call that I, there would be anything of substance. I saw four or five bright objects up in the air. In Gulf Breeze, Florida, a man videotaped what he says is an actual UFO. But the fact is, I've videotaped and saw a UFO. And his account is confirmed by his neighbors. There's a lot more people willing to, to acknowledge that they've had a sighting uh, than, than, you know, five years ago. Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, a quiet town like thousands of other American towns. After some townspeople saw a UFO, the town would forever split into those who saw it and those who don't believe them. I happened to look up in the sky and I seen this red fireball. It, it sure wasn't a meteor, because I've seen them fall before. I never seen any of them with blue lights on. And it looked like it made a, a turn and come back again. And when it come back, it seemed like it went down. What these townsfolk saw will astound you. I got my flashlight and I started down through the woods up to where it was at. There was no wings. There was, uh, 
no tail section, there was no motors, there was no windows, there was no doors. It was big enough for a grown person to stand up in. It had like Egyptian writing, like backwards writing on it. Stars and circles and dashes and lines and things like that. It looked like uh, an acorn. It was really weird. And then it got weirder. It wasn't too much longer. Uh, down through the woods come two gentlemen. The one gentleman, very ramrod straight, very authoritative voice, crew cut hair. I mean, he just reeked of military. He looked object and looked at us. He says, all right, this is now a restricted area. Means we're all ordered out of here. The flatbed went down and empty, and they come back out with something on the back of it covered up about the size of a Volkswagen. What really happened that night? Some townsfolk say nothing happened at all. Are they lying? If so, why? You've got this town split into two groups. You've got the believers and the non-believers. You've got neighbors and neighbors that has known each other all their life. Now they don't want to talk. One believes it and one don't believe it. Experts believe that some of the people of Kecksburg are participating in a hoax. Virtually all of the accounts can be explained by people having looked toward and seeing the Ontario meteor. I don't know how some people can say that nothing ever happened when there were so many people that saw things that night. Something had to happen. The Freedom of Information Act states there was 212 military personnel here that night. But why are some people so sure that nothing at all happened that strange night? UFO researcher Stan Gordon has been investigating this case since he heard the original report. It could be that some of these people were in the wrong place at that time. They were in a position where they didn't see what was going on. The fact that there are dozens of people independent of each other who don't even know each other yet, who have given us detailed information about what they experienced and saw that night, and they're giving us confirming information that has not been published yet. There is no hard evidence or debris from the crash, so Gordon's research is limited to relying on people to tell the truth. As in so many of these cases, you have to go by the eyewitness accounts, and in this case, the eyewitness accounts are very, very strong. If we had the physical hardware, the mystery would be over. Soon after the Kecksburg incident, Clifford Stone saw a strange delivery at Lockland Air Force Base in Asheville, Ohio. Kecksburg is only 200 miles away. I noticed that on the back of the vehicle, it had something that was covered by a tar. It was about uh, 10 to 12 foot at the base, 12 foot tall. It looked like a chocolate drop. And my friend told me that uh, every question I ever had about UFOs was under that canvas. I was mystified. Do these residents of a small town know the truth? As far as they're concerned, they simply want the answer once and for all. The public has the right to know the true facts regardless of what the object was or what really occurred. What was the object and why after 27 years haven't they revealed what really was found? Who or what is behind the UFO phenomenon? Coming up, we'll show you more shocking evidence of UFO encounters. This was an object that moved at a very fast rate of speed. Unassailable testimony from police officers who witnessed UFOs. Saw uh, four or five bright objects up in the air. And stay tuned for actual footage of UFOs recorded by eyewitnesses, including rare footage of a new type of sighting. We now are going through a series, it seems, of daylight sightings. And we'll find out if UFO sightings are simply hoaxes. Judgment, if you will. But the fact is, I've videotaped and saw a UFO. But are they friendly, or are they a threat to our existence? This object made a right hand turn, and by this point, I was getting really scared. Why has the military been engaged in a UFO cover-up, even forcing their own servicemen into silence? We were just told to, to not say anything about this to anybody outside of, of uh, combat information center. The commander told me that I wasn't even supposed to mention this. We'll tell you about the civilian watchdog group that took matters into their own hands. The Air Force was being very secretive about UFOs, and we were trying to get information out. And stay tuned for the summary of all the info in our Unex report here on Unexplained Mysteries. Explained Mysteries, Real People, Real UFOs. 
skeptics say that UFO eyewitnesses are not credible. But what if the witness is a policeman trained to observe and to tell the truth? A police station in Cleveland, Ohio. This is the actual official statement recorded by Detective John Healy. I have with me in my office at the present time, Detective John Healy. Healy's going to describe in his own way uh, of an incident that had occurred last night. Okay, we, uh, we left Port Columbus Airport at about 10.30 last night. It had a steady red light on its nose. It was cigar-shaped and it had a green light shining down out of the aft end. Detective Healy flew in a routine training exercise the previous night. Over the town of Mansfield, Ohio, the men encountered a UFO. We were almost involved in a mid-air collision. I noticed a red light, but I thought it would be the port wing of another aircraft. We saw it uh, kept coming at us. It didn't have any wings. It didn't have any, any windows, as you would see in a, in a, on a conventional aircraft. The other crewmen saw the UFO and documented the incident in an official military report. But Healy insists on coming forward to talk publicly about this life-threatening event. This object moved at a very fast rate of speed. It saw us probably before we saw it. It just tracked us because we had all our navigation lights on and running and blinking. Over the town of Mansfield, the UFO got so close, the pilot had to initiate evasive maneuvers. And the pilot put the uh, helicopter into a dive. The chopper descended at 500 feet per minute. When it reached an altitude of 1,700 feet, the UFO shot a tractor beam at the helicopter. This was just a humongous green light just shining down on us in a, a, very, a very definite cone shape. You could look at the light, you could actually see the beam of the light. Suddenly, the light somehow pulled the chopper up towards the UFO. It scanned us for that instant that it hesitated over us. It scanned us. Then it took off. After the object went off to the west, the helicopter uh, pilot noted that although he had been in a descent, and his controls were in the configuration for a descent, the helicopter had actually risen to 3,800 feet. The object was under continual observation for five minutes, perhaps even more. Further confirmation of the UFO incident came from two people on the ground, Irma DeLong and her son Charles. The kids kept hollering, they wanted to stop, they wanted to stop. She finally stopped the car and I jumped out. I remember uh, the whole top of the sky was lit up a dull fluorescent green. To be honest, it scared me. I was scared at that time. But I didn't, it didn't sink in that it was still really something, a UFO. This brought together two groups of witnesses that established the exact location of the event. We were able to uh, compute the flight path of the helicopter. J. Allen Hynek, the director of KUFOS, the Center for UFO Studies, interviewed the crewmen at length. Their drawings of the UFO were strikingly similar. More disturbing was their sense that the UFO intended to destroy them. After the encounter, the helicopter, like the crewman, was never the same. The aircraft number was a 15444. That was the aircraft we were in that night. Uh, she was never any good after that. The radios would never work right. Uh, navigation instruments, nothing. What caused that damage? Some said it was simply a meteor. Well, there's no way this could have been a meteor. It lasted for five minutes. No meteor takes five minutes to cross the sky from horizon to horizon. Detective John Healy and several witnesses saw a flying saucer. Its purpose, perhaps deadly, is still unexplained. Thousands of miles away, other rural towns in Idaho and Washington are plagued by UFOs. Over there, at the top of those trees over there, there was a bright light shining. And, and it was like uh, they were putting on a, a laser show. They turn up on their side and you see like laser beams of lights. 
I called the Post Falls Police Department. And they came out, he asked us what we thought we were looking at. At this point, I handed him my binoculars, and I said, look for yourself. He immediately reported the same thing that we were seeing. In Post Falls, Idaho, the police switchboard lit up with calls reporting the same craft in the sky. Well, it was on graveyard shift, and we had reports that people were seeing twinkling lights. They were kind of nervous, said there's something floating in the sky. Well, the first thing we did was run outside and look and see if there really was something in the sky, and there was a white light, and there were colored lights kind of rotating around it. There was red, green, blue, purple, and a gold colored light, and they were flashing systematically. It was very shallow light, two shallow saucers placed together. The only lights on it were on the bottom. In the center was a recessed amber light. A Post Falls local shot this compelling videotape. It shows one of the crafts in the sky. In order for the camera to pick up the object, the light emanating from it would have to be unusually bright. Not far away, near Lake Newman, a man was almost blinded by an unearthly light. So I was driving down West Newman Lake Road a little before midnight. All of a sudden, a blinding white light came from directly above me. I slowed down, opened the door, looked up. Uh, all I could see was a bright, round, incredibly bright light straight above me. Immediately became incredibly frightened, and I drove away as fast as I could. I headed uh, straight to a house not too, too far away down the road, a friend's house. He was so scared. He was just, I've never seen him shake. He actually was just shaking. And very pale, no color to him. I was in the military. This light was not something I've ever seen on any aircraft. It, it would have to be something incredibly large. I can't imagine, but the light would have to be 50 yards across. McClure called Lieutenant Colonel Jerry Rolls, who tried to find out if the craft was of military origin. Based on the uh, interface that I had with the Air Force, I can only say what the object was not. But I have pretty well ruled out any type of encounter with an aircraft. Ever since what happened, uh, obviously I don't stop in the same place. Uh, I feel uncomfortable in the dark, not because I think there's a monster out there waiting for me, uh, but because there's something out there and I didn't see what was behind the light. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, real people, real UFOs. The UFO sightings over a Florida resort town. And we have over 500 witnesses, and we have about 262 recorded sightings, and we've investigated um, almost 200 of those. We'll show you a real-life, unidentified flying object. But the fact is, I videotaped and saw a UFO. And the expert analysis of UFO footage that seems to verify their existence. The photographs, the videos, the witnesses have all proved positive. And the witnesses that are threatened. And this object made a right hand turn. And by this point, I was getting really scared. The incredibly advanced technology. But is it of human origin? swing about 4,000 miles an hour. And why does the military intimidate civilians, along with their own servicemen, into silence? I had some pictures of it that I took. They told me if I had any more pictures and if they come out, I would have it up in jail or there's not out for them to do. I think they are probably covering up the incidents with the FDR because they're covering up all incidents of UFO sightings. And all these questions and answers will be summed up in the Unex Report on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, real people, real UFOs. Why are there so many sightings in a picturesque little town in Florida? What you're looking at is extraordinary footage of something perhaps a spacecraft floating in the sky above the trees. Welcome to Gulf Breeze, Florida. It's a beautiful resort town on the Gulf Coast, otherwise unremarkable. And we have over 500 witnesses, and we have about 262 recorded 
sightings, and we've investigated um, almost 200 of those. A group of concerned Gulf Breeze residents are carrying out the investigations. Most of them belong to MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, determined to get to the bottom of UFO mysteries. We call the military. We're told, no, we did not have anything in the area uh, at the time that, that you had your sighting. Uh, of course, there will be those that say, well, that's the typical military response. In 1987, Ed Walters and his wife, Frances, took incredible photographs of a UFO. At first, Ed was concerned that he would be mocked, but eventually, he sent them to Dwayne Cook, publisher of the Gulf Breeze Sentinel. Dozens of people came forward to relate their own accounts. One of the more recent videos uh, shows a light that was red, and all of a sudden it turns white and starts flashing. It's extremely brilliant pulses of light, it appears that the actual, it's as if the actual size of the image, which would be related to the size of the light source itself, changed in uh, like one thirtieth of a second or so, from one TV frame to the next. Uh, we don't have anything that could do that, so far as I know. Soon, dozens of people turned out at night and captured UFOs on videotape. To videotape a UFO at night is one thing, but capturing one in the light of day minimizes the possibility of hoaxing. We are now are going through a series, it seems, of daylight sightings. The photo and video evidence that we've recently seen from Gulf Breeze is far more important than the, all the previous UFO photo and video evidence combined. 90% of sightings happen at night. Only 10% are reported during the day. And now, more people are stepping forward as UFO eyewitnesses. People like doctors and lawyers and, and real estate people. and It's just not a bunch of lunatics <laughs> running around saying that they saw lights in the sky. This is footage of one of the Gulf Breeze UFOs. The daylight sightings that we've had of the last year have all been authenticated photographs, the videos, the witnesses have all proved positive. Ed Walters saw unusual bright flashes in the sky, but this time in daylight. Panning around here, 360, there's the sand dunes, that's the north. Oh, jeez, goodness gracious. Over those dunes, right there. A shiny object that floats in the sky briefly, then vanishes. There she is, right there. Oh my God, just hovering right there. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, wouldn't you know it? Video analyst Jeff Sanyo authenticates Walter's tape. Notice particularly when he sees the object, how the oscilloscope shows that the camera was indeed bounced around. You see a lot of video disturbance there, which is typical of a raw video of a camera that's been bounced around. That eliminates editing as a possibility for creating this thing. Walters also took this photo of what he claims is a fighter jet's near collision with a UFO. And the jet had, was continuing on and passed right, looked to me like it was headed right at the UFO. Some people claim that Walters is simply a sophisticated hoaxer. Judge me if you will, but the fact is I videotaped and saw a UFO. This daylight UFO footage is particularly revealing. The UFO, as he observed it, came out of the southeast. It moved over his head at an incredibly fast speed and disappeared out to the northwest. This particular sighting in itself was a landmark sighting in that it actually showed the UFO disappearing or leaving, as it were. You see it coming in here, it's very indistinct. It appears to be moving relatively slowly. So here's a slowdown of the same video. Object hovering there motionless, and zips off instantaneously, barely make it out as it zips off to the right. The object was about three miles away on the left side, got up to about two miles away on the right side, was doing about 4,000 miles an hour. Another resident captured a UFO on tape. Both its flight pattern and its shape are similar to the others. The, the various videos corroborate each other. They corroborate previous witness testimony. And so it all, the, the pieces of the puzzle all fit together. With all the UFO sightings, membership in MUFON is growing. 
there's a program afoot to try to slowly educate people all over the world that we're not alone. Who knows, maybe one of those days we'll have that uh, uh, landing on the White House lawn experience where no longer is there any doubt that they're here, they're among us. Hundreds of eyewitnesses, daylight UFOs, compelling encounters. But what do they mean? I do believe there is a growing pattern of contact which suggests that we are getting closer to actually meeting the neighbors. Gulf Breeze is part of that pattern. Later on Unexplained Mysteries, Real People, Real UFOs. What caused a skeptical police officer to become a believer in UFOs? I didn't believe initially when I received the call that I, there wouldn't be anything of substance. I looked up in the air and I saw four or five bright objects up in the air. We'll explore the case of the Scranton UFOs. It was just about dusk, and as we were there up by the power lines, all of a sudden, these objects started coming up out of the treetops. They were just everywhere. It seemed wherever we turned, there was another one. I just remembered not hearing a sound. We'll take a close look at the military's role in the Cherry Creek incident. I thought, well, what the hell did I do to deserve this? All these guys coming in telling me that if I don't keep my mouth shut, they're going to throw me in jail. And why does the military harass their own servicemen who witnessed strange craft? We were just told to, to not say anything about this to anybody outside of, of uh, Combat Information Center uh, for at least 15 to 20 years. And we'll give you the final answers about the phenomenon of UFOs in our Onyx Report. It's all here on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries. Real people. Real UFOs. Most UFOs are witnessed from a safe distance, but sometimes they get up close and threatening. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Christy Styers was driving home one night, alone. I at first thought it was another car, but I looked out towards the back of me and I noticed there was no car in back of me. And I, I was adjusting the mirror and I noticed an object in the sky it was flying behind my car and I kept watching it in my rearview mirror. And eventually it went over to where I could see it looking out the window. It kept following me driving down the road. And then I made a right hand turn and this object made a right hand turn. And by this point I was getting really scared. She drove into the driveway, ran up to the front door, came flying in the house, and said something was following her. And then when she told me it was above her car, I didn't know what she was talking about. When the lights returned to the Steyer's home months later, Nadia's husband, Gary, shot this amazing UFO footage. It was uh, a feeling of great excitement because these things were happening right before your eyes. You didn't know really what these lights were, what was happening. Gary called 911 to tell the police about what he saw. And within a matter of minutes, Officer Cali arrived along with three state policemen. And as I taped, they stood alongside of me with their handheld radios in my front yard. I didn't believe initially when I received the call that I, there would be anything of substance to that I would see. Immediately upon exiting my police vehicle, I looked up in the air and I saw four or five bright objects up in the air. The police department called the local airport to see if there was anything on their radar. We looked out the window over towards where, where he was talking about and uh, sure enough, there were some lights out there. But nothing showed up on the radar screen. I felt that there was possibly a problem with the radar system. Uh, shortly thereafter, he contacted me back and said that they checked it again and there's nothing up there. A few nights later, Gary Styers encountered more lights in the night. It was just about dusk, and as we were there up by the power lines, all of a sudden, these objects started coming up out of the treetops. They were just everywhere. Seeing wherever we turned, there was another one. I just remembered not hearing a sound. As always, there were those who did not believe that anyone saw a UFO. All I know is that we taped some unusual lights and objects in the sky. The night of January 8th did happen, and I wasn't the only person that saw these things. And all I can say about the tape is that it speaks for itself. January 8th, 
Cherry Creek, a small rural town in New York, where a UFO sighting changed Harold Butcher's life forever. Harold was 16, working in this barn. As he was working in the barn, he noticed that the radio he was listening to became staticky and, and blanked out. He had been listening to music, and there was a glow in the sky, and he ran to the window to see what was happening and saw this gigantic object descending. Two groups soon arrived on the scene. One was Project Blue Book, the special Air Force unit that investigated UFO sightings. The other was NICAP, a civilian group that investigated Project Blue Book. And NICAP sent uh, one of our investigation teams to the scene. NICAP's members included scientists and retired military personnel. NICAP uh, came into existence because the Air Force was being very secretive about UFOs, and it was felt that a high-level civilian group could maybe pry loose some information. We were basically adversarial. The Air Force, we felt, was hiding information, and we were trying to get information out. Activists would follow Project Blue Book into the field and find eyewitnesses and information the Air Force missed, or maybe didn't want to reveal. The Air Force uh, system of in Blue Book was to, to label reports in one of three ways. Either it was explained, in which case they would say what they thought it was, an aircraft or a balloon or whatever, or it was unexplained, unknown, they used to say, and the third was insufficient data. It was a very interesting case, and uh, went one with multiple evidence, including the electromagnetic effects, the physical traces, the illumination, everything. It was a classic mainline UFO sighting. Well, it looked like an airplane. It was that big, and when it sat in the field, it had three legs on it. It looked like two turkey platters put together with a roll of rivets around the outside, um, and it sat there a good five minutes, so I got one real good look at it, and I've never seen my animals act the way that these did. Because they jumped and kicked and bucked and made all kinds of ungodly noises. Even stranger was the fate of two state troopers who also witnessed the object. They filed a report, then were never heard from again. They had a lot to lose by reporting this. They were risking their reputation. And for them to come out and actually state that they had seen something like that meant a great deal to me. It, it indicated to me that something genuine was happening in the area. Dick Nelson lives next to the butcher farm. On the day of the sighting, he talked to the state troopers. Well, after the policemen saw it, they had a whole different attitude towards it. They couldn't believe what they saw. Then the Air Force arrived. Next thing I know, here come this guy from the Air Force. They had a truckload of guys that taped off the whole area out there. An Air Force officer started making threats. I had some pictures of it that I took. And the Air Force took them, and they wouldn't even let me have them. They told me if I had any more pictures, and if they come out, I would end up in jail or the nut house one of the two. Despite the Air Force's apparent cover-up, they may have left the biggest piece of evidence. They classified the incident as unidentified. The fact that the Air Force classified this as an unidentified is very interesting and very significant because they were very stingy about doing that. Um, ordinarily, they would be very happy if they could label a sighting and get rid of it. If it was, a, you know, even if it was stretching the truth, they would try to explain it as an aircraft or a balloon or strobe lights or something, a meteor. But the Air Force seemed to do all they could to suppress the truth. I thought, well, what the hell did I do to deserve this? All these guys coming in telling me that if I don't keep my mouth shut, they're going to throw me in jail. Coming up, who or what caused the unidentified objects seen by crewmen on the USS FDR? My friends called me to come outside and we observed a bright light quite high in the sky. And uh, all of a sudden a fireball dropped between the upper ship to the lower ship. Did the military hide the reports of those UFO sightings? I think they are probably covering up the incidents with the FDR because they're covering up all incidents of so UFO sightings. And we'll wrap it all up for you with our Unex Report on Unexplained Mysteries, Real People, Real UFOs. Unexplained Mysteries, Real People, Real UFOs.
Airbase. Many reports of UFOs occur near military air bases. The U.S. aircraft carrier, Franklin D. Roosevelt, was on maneuvers off the coast of Cuba. Suddenly, a brilliant object appeared. I saw a bright light at the forward of the bow on the right-hand side, which would be the starboard side. So I follow these guys up to the flight deck, and we're watching this little object, like a light that were, was following our ship. And then it came out of the sky at us. Uh, it looked like a star, but it was much brighter. The light tracked at a high speed and came to a stop, altered direction, and accelerated to a high speed, stopped again. Contrary to Navy procedure, these three veterans were not asked to file reports, and there is no record of the sightings. Strangest of all, none of the other men who saw the UFOs can be found. During maneuvers, codenamed Operation Main Brace, there were many UFO sightings. A plane from the FDR was followed by an unknown object. Photographs taken by a news reporter provide compelling evidence. He shot a series of photos before it suddenly took off at an extremely high rate of speed. We knew that it couldn't be an airplane because an airplane could not start and stop. The rate of speed was too high, too fast for a helicopter. While serving on the USS FDR near Rio de Janeiro, Leon Treadwell saw a highly unusual craft. Two ships or appeared to be ships, one above the other, maybe about two or three hundred feet separated the two of them, and the counter-rotating lights. And uh, all of a sudden, a fireball dropped between the upper ship to the lower ship. Nobody knew what the devil was going on. There was actual radar contact on these uh, vehicles. Leon was not alone when he saw the striking image. Several officers, they couldn't believe what they were looking at. Everybody signed a release statement that nobody outside of CIC would say anything about this. The CIC, or Combat Information Center, oversees a ship's radar, target surveillance, and general operations. A commander down in Virginia, when I was discussing this with him, he was on a ship. He told me that I wasn't even supposed to mention this. I just ignored what he said. I had people that uh, laughed and said they wouldn't believe me. And, really? Yeah, I was there. I was there. I seen it. You weren't there. You don't know. You don't know what it was like. The incidents were written up by the military in Project Blue Book. But why were the UFOs observing the Navy ships and planes? It's a possibility that uh, our weapons were of, uh, of uh, a sort that they were interested in. The FDR uh, was the only aircraft carrier at the time that had uh, thermonuclear capability. It was the only one uh, that was allowed to uh, carry the H-bomb. After the dawn of the nuclear age, there was an increase of UFO sightings near nuclear weapon sites. But the military would not verify the accounts of the men who served loyally for their country. I think they are probably covering up the incidents with the FDR because they're covering up all incidences of UFO sightings. I won't uh, rest till I find somebody else that was on that flight deck uh, with me. I witnessed that same thing I did. Do UFOs really exist? Or are they simply hoaxes or natural phenomena? Find out in our UNX report, the rare daytime sightings, the woman chased by a mysterious spacecraft, and the policeman's near deadly encounter. All that and more coming up in our UNX report. It's time for the UNX report. UFOs, do they exist? And I saw this big triangular shape, three lights on each corner coming over my house. Just like it was sliding through the sky and it mm -hmm. tilted like it was looking down at it. You got the believers and the non-believers. The believers think that UFOs are alien spacecraft. Compelling evidence supports their beliefs. My friend told me that uh, every question I ever had about UFOs was under that canvas. I was mystified. The fact that there are dozens of people independent of each other who don't even know each other yet 
who have given us detailed information about what the experience they saw that night. It didn't have any wings. It didn't have any any windows as you would see in a, in a, on a conventional aircraft. But are UFO reports created by hoaxers? Judge me if you will, but the fact is I videotaped and saw a UFO. Skeptics maintain several theories that explain UFOs are not alien. They're not even spacecraft. Virtually all of the accounts can be explained by people having looked toward and seen the Ontario meteor. But if UFOs are not alien spacecraft, why does the military seem to cover up their existence? They told me if I had any more pictures and if they come out, I would end up in jail or the nut house, one of the two. He looked object and looked at us and says, all right, this is now a restricted area. Means we're all ordered out of here. What about these real people who've seen unidentified flying objects? I feel uncomfortable in the dark, not because I think there's a monster out there waiting for me, uh, but because there's something out there and I didn't see what was behind the light. Immediately upon exiting my police vehicle, I looked up in the air and I saw four or five bright objects up in the air. The people in the community who have said that they've seen UFOs are people like doctors and lawyers and, and real estate people. And it's just not a bunch of lunatics <laughs> running around saying that they saw lights in the sky. UFOs exist. People have witnessed unidentified objects in the Earth's skies. But what exactly are they? We may never know. For now, they must remain an unexplained mystery. Who knows, maybe one of those days we'll have that uh, uh, landing on the White House lawn experience. I know what I saw, and I'm not going to deny it. Ruthless obsessions. He had filleted his heart and kept it in the freezer. Extreme beliefs. I was chanting Lucifer over and over. Cold-blooded killers or victims so desperate they were driven to madness and murder. Notorious. Weeknights at 8, only on Vile. True Story.